Okay, so uh, now in this video, last time in the last video we did end up creating our um, main volume shape with our additional fields that we want to use. So uh, again, based on the first video, I have a section here that I can define. I have my uh, VDB uh, settings here, and then VDB activate under the reference will give me a bounding box where I want to visualize, as I have explained in the first video. Uh, so what we're going to do now is going to dive back in here, go to CVX volume display sh shader. So I'm going to just delete this because I've been done experimenting. Um, this is pointing. Uh, this is not pointing the right size, but this is pointing the right shader. No, this is okay. So my swap bounds is pointing to my uh, volume fields, but I'm going to change that to uh, this little guy for uh, to my bounding box, to test bounding box for uh, uh, fast iterations as I'm testing. So I can just drag and drop it to my swap bound. So basically it's just going to render this area. And I'm going to find a little bit of an interesting section, which I believe that should... Is there anything inside here? I guess we can just push it a little bit more left. Okay, that should do. So now let's, this is not, why is not working? Oh, because it's, I was checking my in-between test file. Okay, let it cook. All right, so uh, as we can see, this is the current result of the volume shader here. So now I'm going to explain this exactly what's happening. Um, we need to read this information from the disk to define our main shape area, right? So in that case, I think I can just rebuild this here and then these are my outputs and then we can rewire them to see what each one of these guys are doing and why are they there. So let's go with that. Okay, so I'm going to drop in a volume sample and I'm going to wire the file name, which is pointing to the file we cooked for volume fields. And then for sample position, I'm going to fetch the original position of the bounding box. And I am interested in the field named density. So basically, I'm just going to change the signature to primitive name and then I'll type here density. Then CT, which is, I think this one is doing that one as well. So it's exactly the same. I'm just going to directly wire this to my density now. So kind of like overriding what I'm doing here. Okay. So this is my current density. So like if I see this already, I have some really low density areas. So I guess using a ramp, we can get rid of those. So if I put a ramp parameter here, I'll say test ramp. go outside here and this will be my test ramp I believe this should kind of take care of that but if there, it's showing a little white haze I think that's something to do with the light not doing the right thing honestly because if I push this black forward it should actually get rid of that but I think it's not it's probably a visualization issue because it's not visible here maybe it's the lights let me try a different light Enable, enable, I'm just going to disable everything. Let's get rid of this guy as well. Let's put uh, a spotlight. Just trying to aim it a little better. Oh, I'm not sure what's going on. Let's try it out. You know what? Why don't I just do this? Look through the perspective. No cam. Save view. Target light. Spotlight. Okay. There you go. And now I can look through my perspective view of my volume all right maybe let's crank up that 
the value is a bit more so we can see a bit better. Okay, cool. Let's <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let's dive inside. Procedure volume. We're here. Okay, now if I play with it, I think it's changing, but because probably my full density is a lot bigger, so I guess in order to make that work, we need to probably increase the max value. So I don't know, something like this. Uh, but there is also a way to d uh, display the density, uh, which we can see from geometry spreadsheet. And then uh, you can go to intrinsics. And if, you if you're not a node like this, we'll come here. And then you can say uh, volume. Uh, it's not here. Why? Because it's not a regular volume. It would be here. Volume max density. Oh, because it's a VDB. So I guess here it would be visible. Volume max value. So, okay, so my max value density in this frame at least is uh, four. This could be somewhere else too, but the, and then I have some values here. My temperature is fairly low, but that's fine. So we're gonna, we can use five, I guess, as a, our highest value to fit. Okay, I'm going to put a 5 here. Now maybe it's going to work better. Not really. Okay. Well, I don't need this one now. It was just to see that if it's working. Uh, again, we can go back in here to increase our visibility. Obviously, it's going to slow down. Okay, so let's go again a little bit higher, so it's a bit responsive. Okay, uh, let's go back inside. So right now we're just displaying the regular density. So if I want to crank the density up, I can just put like a multiply constant here, as we did in the previous uh, first video. And then if I crank it up, it's... It's gonna get much denser, but obviously, because this is based on our simulation, so we're not doing any manipulation yet, so it doesn't have enough detail, right? So I think maybe 10 is better, okay. But I think we want to see the results, so let's put this guy here because I have, I think, somewhere here anyway. So I originally, I'm multiplying the density by 20, so let's do the same actually, but we'll do it after, okay. Uh, so now let's add a little noise to this by using our velocity field because remember we had a, a pyro simulation so we already have a direction that the smoke was going so we can utilize that to 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 add some noise so how are we going to do that i'm going to move these guys up so we're going to do another volume sample but this time we're going to do volume sample vector because we are trying to bring in the velocity field which is this guy here also so we're just going to do the same thing because we're using the same file file to file goes same place and then this also has the sample position which goes to our uh, <clears throat> global position value and um, remember we had the color field so we can actually visualize we can actually visualize to see if our uh, uh, velocity is working so we can say bind export which, which I have actually here I believe somewhere here yeah okay let's plug this in here just to, just to see if it's actually working okay so I have the color now in and directly out but then on my visualization node volume visualization so I have the color here as well if I plug this guy in here Okay, I want a density, density, want a density, let's say like this, it's a bit too much, but I guess maybe now I want my diffuse field to be colored, and then it would be like this, let me try to crank that up more, just to see that if it's 
varying, it means that it's uh, it's changing its colors. So it means that we have the information that is working. So if I go like this, it's kind of working. Okay, maybe infrared. Okay, so yes, so our velocity field is reading correct. So we're going to use that to uh, displace our object. But I'm going to go back here. Let's go back inside. So what do I do with this now? Like I, as I showed before, so we need to create a turbulence field, and then using these uh velocities we're going to multiply our turbulence field and then we're going to add that to our position before we sample the density so let's do that so i have my sample here let's bring in a turbulence field turbulence noise so i was using 4 by 4 by 4 0.75 let's do the same thing 4 by 4 by 4 0.75 i don't know if i was using a, a 3d noise no i wasn't Okay, so position to position. This is just to generate uh, uh, the noise itself. And then look what I'm doing here is that I have a multiply. I have a multiply here. And then I'm multiplying the output of this with this. And then I'm sampling. And then, sorry, and then I'm adding the result to the world space. here so now we got some um, breakup so if I'm gonna remove this so that this is my uh, row uh, velocity field so if I do a multiply constant as I bring this to zero it's gonna kind of, so as, as you can see like even I increase the result it's kind of like trying to go somewhere anyway in, in reverse though um, so it is kind of like following the pattern right but I want to multiply this with a noise so it kind of like breaks up nicer so let's see if we are doing the right thing we don't want to change these things so I'm multiplying by 0.2 let's do the same thing so the results are same okay and then my turbulent noise was okay so now this is our current density which is here so the output should be fairly similar. So then I have uh, another field here. I have the filaments, right? So we kind of do the same thing, but I have a secondary level of noise here as well, which you can also do, I guess, because I have like a wide noise, and then I believe I have a narrow noise and a wide noise. So let's do the same thing. So this one would be a narrow noise because it has a higher frequency. Okay, and then let's Copy paste this. Let's call it wide noise. So this was two by two by two. It's almost the same settings. And then I multiply. And then this one is multiplied by 0.5, so it kind of like pushes more because it's gonna generate less noise. And then I multiply this again with this. The output of this noise is multiplied by this noise. So I'm kind of like layering uh, noises on top of each other. So then I kind of multiply. What do I do here? Yeah, I'm adding this to density. This one is filaments. Oh, okay. So basically, my bad. I multiplied this guy. I so I only used the 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 wide one. To break up the filaments actually i thought this is not what i did but apparently this is what i did and also did render it so let's leave it here for now so let's have a look at our filaments in order to do that again we need to sample we need to bring it into our uh, scene so i'm just going to change it to filaments filaments okay so if i plug it in here it's just going to give me the filaments right but I want to reach to a, a, a smaller section of these filaments, so that's why I have this filament ramp here. So if I go up on there, this is my filament ramp. I can actually name it properly, filament ramp. Okay, I'm not gonna re uh, create one because I don't want to break my uh, UI. And this changed already, but if I can probably do this like this. Just so I can show you how the filaments look. 
Oops. What happened? Why did it not work? Okay. I think I can just copy paste this to show you the result that what it was doing. And I can go in here for one. So what I did is was like uh, get a bit smoother curve out here. So you can select on this node and then change the spline. Next one, change the spline. And then only if you click, it's kind of like it's going to squeeze out the soft areas and then make the, the denser areas more visible. Okay, so I'm just going to pause the TV. Okay, so as you guys can see, I have these little denser areas. And if I go, maybe try to get some more detail just to show you. More and more I increase the resolution, more and more detail I'm going to get, which is good. And then the, the trick is going to be the part that how do we make these look like they're blocking lights is by using a color field so the light doesn't affect it as much. So let's go back inside our volume shader. So this guy was plugged in here, which is fine. And then I just put a multiply here. And then I exposed, I, I, I promoted the second input to, to overwrite the density of the filaments. And, and then finally, I kind of merged these. So remember, we had the, uh, this guy here, which was our original density, right? So if I do this uh, 25 or so, just to make it a bit lesser, let's say, say 10. Actually, just to maybe to show you the difference, I'm going to leave this as five. And then I have my filaments here. So basically, I can just add my generic volume and filaments just using an add swap. So it's going to kind of like add into it. And then if I use a multiply constant, and just go like maybe 10, 100. And then I just get much denser filaments inside my original volume okay but still this is not gonna render like that like if we uh, actually let me see the renders that I can show you the raw renders again so we can go primary so these are my primary renders there's one light I didn't use here But I can, this is the new version of the DGV player, so I need to find how to change it to different, how to show the different layer. Bear with me one second. Oh, where is it? Next layer, maybe? Okay. Layers. All right. So, now the thing is, the volume itself, if it doesn't have a color, it's going to contribute this light. The volume light is going to contribute everywhere equally. But because we have a separate field called filaments, so we can use this field to actually give a much darker color to the filament area. So like this, we will be able to uh, create these uh, uh, Wayne-like structures. It's going to break up the light, and it's just going to look much more interesting. So let's close this guy. And how do we do that? So what I have here, so this was the part with the density, right? So I'm going to hook this back up. So basically, uh, oh, I did actually add some details to filaments. So right now, where is my filaments? Density, filaments. Okay, so I'm going to change the input of my filaments to my second noise because this is what I did before. So let's do that. So get the original position from here and now we're going to displace we're going to add some values to these guys and change the 3d noise doesn't matter and now i'm going to update my filaments input position from here okay 
So this was just a bit lesser noise, I guess. I can go maybe change the noise type, whatever, doesn't matter. So this is the basically the, de the density field itself that is exactly this part and this part. Uh, not as pretty, but you can always copy and paste. So basically what we're doing is, to explain it a bit in more simple terms, we're bringing, we're telling Houdini to look into this world space at render time and create a turbulent uh, uh, noise and then offset those points using this turbulence by uh, uh, multiplying it with another vector field so I can push it out a little bit. So basically we're just really pushing the position values at random time. So it's, if it's 1, it's becoming 1.5, etc. And then we're saying, okay, now this is the new position. So using this file that we saved, look if there is any density in that area and then display it with the offset result. So this is the current result at the density level. So if I go here, this is what I have at the moment. Okay, this little section. So what can I say? I think we should just give it a, a little render. So I'm going to delete this part now. And I think I'm going to hook this up back as well. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the difference. So let's go maybe a test cam, hook it up, go somewhere here. So if we, because we don't need this light, we're going to go back to the original light. Because we had a temperature field, so this was the original temperature field, which has the density and temperature. So basically what I did is, because I want my volume nebula to be lit nicely, so just load your simulation into another geometry node, and then literally just click on volume light, and that's what the nebula light is. But we have to play though with the values until we are happy. And then it needs to have a shader. I think this one is the regular fireball shader. So you kind of like render it and then see how it looks like. It's uh, Since this is not a beginner level of the tutorial, I'm not going to explain this one now. Um, but it's like, so you just make it look, look like a fireball. You can change the colors to whatever colors you like as well. And then you will, uh, but we will not render this guy. We're just going to use this to lit this guy. So let's go back in here. Let's go inside here. Let's go inside the volume shader. So I'm going to hit render. Before I hit render, though, I'm going to go to my shader to turn off, which we're going to make the shader together as well, to disconnect the color. Because if I don't have a color value, but if I if I have a color input connected to my shader, and if, if there is no color field, it's going to render as black. So we don't want that. So maybe now I go test cam. OK, render fast. This is Nebula Render. Let me check my render. Okay, let's just bring down the quality a little bit. So it kind of goes faster for test purposes. Um, I think <coughs> I think these are all correct. It's all on the visibility, so let's not have anything else turned on. So we just want the Nebula Light to be active. And I don't want this, this. Okay, that should be correct. Let's hit render. And let's wait. So now this should just render something like a very gray, very bright object. Okay, let's this here it's actually a lot brighter than I thought maybe let it cook a little bit so we see some frames oh because this is not on it needs to be on okay waiting for a few frames Okay, 
there is something is not working because I thought we would get maybe I don't have the material for this guy did I delete it material firewall oh yes I made a mistake I don't have the fireball material okay so this was in my older scenes I guess let's create one because the, the, the volume light needs to have the shader um, fireball shader I think there is a, the it was the default settings I'm not sure we'll have to test and see well the fastest way to actually test and see would be to turn this guy off and to turn this guy off and render this with the shader maybe like this and then play with the shader until it looks right so we cannot do that as well like we're gonna play with the values so we kind of get a hot core etc this should be the whole cache yeah waiting for it to load I guess this is one of the things that will get fixed with Karma is the uh, first uh, time to pixel. First pixel is fairly slow. Okay, still doing something. Come on, I need it faster. This is suspiciously taking a long time let's try again okay let me pause it and once it starts rendering I will uh, no okay it's coming okay so I think my headlight is on so let's turn off the head oh it's off so there's a light there's a light somewhere Yes, this guy and this guy because I just want to see the uh, effect on the uh, lighting itself and this was our volume fields right so we need to render this one Okay, let it cook so now we need to because here we have temperature and density so we want to use these to set our initial light so because by default it looks for a heat which we didn't save so let's go here okay so we're getting something let's get our values correct now I think we're gonna need one light so we can see because we're not gonna use the uh, volume internal lighting so we can get some we can get the gray areas okay now let's go to back to our shader and let's crank up our I think we can refit our uh, source because it was fairly fairly a small value and we can do the same thing for the temperature for the uh, fire intensity okay and now if we crank up the density as well something like this okay so we this like it's like I guess you're getting the idea now this is these are going to be our areas of light source within our volume itself where we kind of get the 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 temperature and then everything else looking kind of correct until we are satisfied so i really want some hot cores okay something like this and then maybe now let's crunch certain sections down so we get a little bit of more contrast and then this is the color you want to play if you want a blue one or a gray one uh, however you want it okay so this is going to work so i'm going to turn this off now and it's using the same shader so let's go back to procedure volume hit render 
since our procedural volume is pointing to this uh, volume procedural node in here, so it doesn't matter uh, where is the, uh, the render flag here, sorry, here. So it's just going to ignore that it has this blue thing here, but it's going to go in there and then render that guy. All right, so uh, noisy, although there's a lot of detail already. And I'm sure we can focus on a simple area and then just see if we have, and it's nice, it has some nice internal shading. Um, so now what we want is the color. I think this is now, not, okay, so I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go enable. So we are going to use the nebula volume light now. Hit render. Let's see, let's save this. So obviously now this might slow down a lot. Okay. Maybe focus on a little section here. And let it render a little bit. We drop the quality so it should not so, so slow. So now our volume doesn't have any color, so it's being lit evenly everywhere, although there's a lot of uh, different uh, density in certain areas. So what do we need to do? Um, now we're going to introduce the, the color field. So let's go back, dive inside to our CVEX volume, volume shader. So what I'm doing here is that we already create the field, so the renderer can use the field. So but what I'm doing here is I can simply say that, okay, I can create a constant, 1, 1, 1, and then I can output as 1, which means that our entire volume will be white. But I have my filaments, which I want to change the color of my filaments. Um, so when if their color is very dark, they're going to suck the light, so they're going to kind of like show a lot of more detail in certain areas. So from the output of my density, this is my filaments, the density of my filaments. So like here, right, just before I merge it with the main volume, I made a branch down and then I'm telling, I put a, a compare node and I go like this. If less than zero or equal to, I think that would work. Which this, this guy returns a, a zero or one. The, the, the reason I cannot directly use the, multi, the volume itself is, is because I don't want to make the color value equal to density. What, what I'm looking at is if there is a density more than a certain amount, it's going to return me one or zero, right? So now it's returning zero. So then I'm converting this value from integer to float. And I don't want it pitch black, so I kind of add 0 0.1 to it. And then here I declare that my entire volume is white. So basically I'm multiplying the voxels where there is filaments with zero and then because I don't want them to be completely black I add 0.1 to it and then I multiply it with the rest of the volume and then I return this color so let's see what happens now we need to go back to the shader filament volume okay it's plugged in Okay, so now what's going to happen if I hit render? Now the thing is, if the entire volume here is too bright, we can also, instead of putting um, constant, we can actually create uh, new values. Okay, is it going to work? It didn't work. Did I change the shader? properly this is using filament volume a oh no sorry it's not using it now it's now it's going to use it material okay now whatever there is density of volume is kind of now creating a bit darker regions so like this is probably a part of a filament and then this volume behind is probably the regular volume so then now what we need to do is to based on the density of your density distribution of your own simulation, you kind of either want to bring down, play with the densities or just crank up the light. So we kind of get a bit more contrast because contrast is going to make it 
well, it will look, make it look much more interesting. Okay, so, and remember, this is like a really small section of our volume. So now we just want to probably see how much detail we can squeeze out of certain area. So let's maybe, <coughs> let's maybe change our quality settings a little bit higher. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe six by six pixels. <coughs> okay, I'm just gonna get a glass of water. And uh, meanwhile, I just did the render for the rest of the volume. So I think to my taste, well, rest of the volume of this little section. Uh, I think to my taste, we need more contrast and more dense areas, so we can play with that. Some of that comes from the volume step rate, which is we're going to leave as it is. So, which means maybe we want to crank up the density a bit more, and then ideally uh, increase the uh, volume intensity as well. So, where can we go? I think we can... This is actually quite dense already. Maybe we can um, create, yeah, let's, let's just try more density for this one. I guess it will be our density multiplier here. But just let's try, let's try this. Let's try a few different settings. I guess I'm going to save this. Do that. Also, let's maybe change our soap to our actual volume size to see what's happening. What do we actually see? In that case, we'll just need to make bigger voxel sizes so we can hook it up back to our main shape. So this is what we're going to see. Let's go back to our flyby camera, which is the one I used for the uh, rendering which is 180 frames i think okay so let's hit render that test cam fly by hit render let's wait for it to initialize okay now since we are our bounding box is a lot bigger, so the light is getting blocked more. So things are going to be a bit more darker. And I think, let's squeeze it in here a little bit more. Uh, while this is cooking for this frame, I'm going to explain the shader. So in our material network, we create a material builder we did for the test volume as well so it's basically the same thing let's just continue and just pretty much copy paste this and um, also remember you can actually change the colors here as well now in the shader so if we want to get a bit more darker I think there's like a little filament here so maybe we can focus on that region and let's turn off the uh, progressive rendering and then we can play with the dance to scale here as well but if you like here is the thing like here it will be more difficult to uh, mix the densities because we have two different main volumes but in in our uh, procedural volume it's going to be easier so we also if you want to add even more detail as well we can play with the uh, where was our noise for the filaments were here we can play with the roughness that's going to generate more uh, finer areas and little tiny details and basically the uh, the output of this render is eventually gonna get you this render. So there's like a, a this I didn't use the 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 general light in uh, in this tutorial as much. I used the 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 layer. Where is my layers? I just kind of like 
barely brought in the um, distant light. This is the uh, this was the the result of the distant light. So this is like the the volume itself with the gray scales, and it's like really nice details here and there. And then most of the time I use the volume light for the most of the uh, nicer effect. I think we might be looking even there in this case, kind of similar. Yeah, I think we're looking almost at the exact point. But as you guys can see, actually, let me just look at the nebula light. Yeah. So I guess we have, I guess I had uh, more density here in my render. It's a lot darker. So yeah, this is what we can aim for. We can increase the density to uh, get more uh, light or we can, uh, remember we add like a 0.1 here. Maybe we can go smaller. Um, but I think I'm going to first try to increase the density of the filament to see what it does this. Save this. I'm gonna go a thousand. And let's wait for the result. So the good thing is you can put the camera literally right next to here and you'll still kind of get a micro detail because it's evaluated per pixel, not per voxel. So um Obviously, the problem with this is that it's going to take longer to render. But there are other techniques that people have been using. Like we can render these in slices, like using a, a clipping plane, and then actually um, put that on grids in comp, and it, then we will be able to uh, uh, play with it almost real time. Obviously, we're going to have some limitations in terms of detail, but. Um, there are a lot of tricks, tips and tricks that we can use to, to generate uh, these renders. So is this still going? Is there any change at all? Not really. Then we can play with the colors. I, I mean, we can. This probably there's already probably enough detail, so you can even do this in compositing. So it's important to get these nice contrasty areas. And uh, as you guys seen, we didn't spend a lot of time creating this simulation as well. So basically, we could have done a bit more sophisticated uh, uh, initial simulation to, to get nicer shapes like we see in other uh, nebulas. Like uh, there's like a, a one that is almost like a, an explosion right in the center and so on and so forth. Okay, so... This guy will do the uh, render of the um, the volume, and then obviously at the early stage we create a star field here. Oh, sorry, it's not what I'm interested in. Um, where is it? Yeah, so we did create stars, and I object merge them into another node. No, no, actually, yeah, actually I didn't use that one. That's correct. So I just create like a sphere for this. Uh, oops, my camera was on. So I just used like a sphere around the uh, camera and then sc scattered random points using points from volume, gave them a little bit of random scale using a normal uh, Gaussian distribution. So my smallest number is 5.005, biggest one is, uh, no, it, uh, it scales around 0.2. So, and then kind of gave them a random color and then basically just rendered them as points. And hence was the result. If we go back to it again. Where is it? Comp, edit. Okay, so here are some renders, a little comp work here. So, but basically I kind of added back the, uh, the gray areas a little bit and then pretty much just increase the contrast to get what I wanted. And <clears throat> to be honest, this took only a few days to make, uh, and I was extremely happy with the result. Um, I guess this then concludes the uh, the Nebula tutorial. So um, until next time, please uh, don't forget to give me feedback and uh, have a good day. Thank you for watching.